Right behind me, we have the most expensive all new Ford F-250 you can configure and also the most expensive F-250 diesel that we've tested all year. Yeah, and behind me, I've got this F-250, which happens to be the cheapest Ford F-250 we could find for sale in Colorado. And we've got them both right next to each other. So how about we do this in this video? How about we compare the two and show what you don't get, maybe in the work truck, or what you do get. And at the end of this video, first of all, we're gonna unveil the prices and there's a huge gap. Yeah, there's a massive price difference. And also in this work truck, are there items and features that we cannot live without? Yeah, we'll see if you actually need to spend that extra 50 grand and get the more premium truck or if you'd be happy going with the base XL model. $50,000 difference? Crazy, that's, that's one of the biggest price differences <laughs> I think we've ever seen in a truck video. That's huge, we'll come over here. Where should we, well, let's start with this one, right? Yeah, let's do it. So why is this the most expensive F-250 ever? Well, it's because, well, first of all, it is a crew cab standard bed, but it's also the Platinum Edition, which is near their, the top of their lineup. Yep. It's also got a high output diesel. So let's, let's talk about this. And that's how you know it's got red badging. Yeah, so without the, uh, the red badging, you'd be looking at the standard high output or the, the standard engine. But for this year, the high output is now an option. Um, and this is what this truck is equipped with. The engines don't get any better than this as far as Fords go. No, and it also doesn't get any better in the, in the, in the industry, yeah. really. Because this engine, of course, is a heavy duty engine. It's got a unique turbocharger with its own cooling loop. And it's got a unique kind of injection system and the rest of it to make 500 horsepower and 1,200 pound-feet of torque. Dude, that's the best in the segment. Yeah, 1,200 foot-pounds is crazy. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are gonna need that. If you're towing giant trailers all the time and you're pulling goosenecks, you're definitely gonna want the high output power stroke. Yeah, and in a couple of minutes, we'll drive this. Yeah. Because not just, it, it's good for towing, but it's also good to put a smile on your face. <laughs> definitely, I can talk from personal experience about that for sure. Okay, so next thing, why is it so expensive? Well, we mentioned the Platinum, right? You can kind of tell it's got a chrome grill, mm -hmm. so it's pretty nice. It's also the Tremor. Yep, so we've got, you know, all the off-road goodies. We have a winch up front, which that winch by itself isn't cheap. I think that's a $4,000 option. Yeah, basically, 12, yeah. 12,000 pound winch winch up front. Yeah. Um, big, it is a Warren. It yeah, is a Warren. It is. Uh, big recovery points, but you know, you've got these giant um, LED headlights. What are they calling this new design? Isn't it like the, the C-clamp or something? Well, it is, a, it is kind of always the C-clamp. And you can even see it here in the work truck, although this is kind of grayed out, right? Yeah. So, so this is a halogen lamp instead of an LED lamp. Yeah, so, you know, not quite as bright at night. These do warm up, so if you're in a snowy climate like us, you know, sometimes it's nice having the old school halogens, but LEDs are nice to actually see where you're going. Yeah, so. but, but for this uh, generation, the 2023 and up, um, they took the grill all the way to the corner. Basically, mm -hmm. they wanted the truck to look as, as huge as possible. But then also, this has like a $4,400 trimmer package yeah. right which gives you this 35 which is a good year wrangler duratrack tire <laughs> i really like the duratrax yeah. I, I used to have these on a jeep i had for a long time and they do really well in the snow so didn't you have a rem rebel 1500 as i well? did i forgot about that i have had these tires on two vehicles yeah. actually and yeah. they, they perform awesome all winter long so that's a, a worthy upgrade right there you get yeah, and also a rear locking differential, of course. Some skid plates, you get this step, which is not a power step, but still pretty beefy. Yep. Uh, Raptor style step. Now let's talk about this engine because uh, we got to talk about what's under the hood of this work yeah, truck. Yeah, I'll pop the hood for you. Okay. So as you can see, this has kind of a blacked out grill. So this is very basic. This does have a chrome package, which basically means chrome bumper. So normally that would be a black plastic bumper, I'm guessing. To yeah, the grill. yeah. So yeah, under the hood of this one, this is the uh, 6.8 liter V8. So all new for this year, right? Yeah, it is all new for 2023 and up. And this engine is kind of related to the 7.3. So the Godzilla motor, so nicknamed Godzilla 7.3 gas V8 came out in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then for this generation of the truck, they kind of decreased the working displacement, but it has a lot of shared parts. Yeah. Uh, with a big engine. 
Yeah, so this is kind of, you know, the entry level option. It's not available across all trims, but this being the XL, you can get the 6.8 liter. There's also the 7.3, which we had, you know, the Godzilla motor in one of our long-term Super Duties. Yep. Um, and that's still a gas motor, but more of a premium option, but not quite uh, the full premium price upgrade you would pay to go to the Power Stroke. So one thing I immediately noticed is one battery here, yep. right? So you can, of course, get different configurations with either a high output alternator or dual batteries or some combination of the two. Um, of course, dual batteries in the diesel. Yeah, which is a nice option to have, especially, you know, this being a work truck, it's got the potential to have a lot of accessories mounted up to it. Yeah, it has the switches on top. Uh -huh. We'll show you in a second. But also the big difference between this base powertrain and that premium powertrain is the transmission. Yep. Um, it's still 10 speeds in both, but the transmission is built differently. This is called the 10-1. 10R100 versus 10R140 in the diesel. Yeah, so both uh, both 10 speeds, but gearing's a little bit different. Um, and, and capability is different. Capability is different. Obviously, the one in the diesel is going to be able to handle a little more torque. So before we show you the interior options of and take the diesel for a drive, how about we talk payload and towing? Yeah. Because this is heavy duty. Yeah. Where heavy do you want to start? Stuff. Door stickers or? Yeah. Let's look at the door sticker on the on the work truck first. Cool. So if we pop the door open here, pretty impressive number because this obviously isn't loaded with a whole lot of equipment. So right here, 3,519 pounds. And something else you can see, you're gonna notice the difference is seating capacity. Total is six, because up here in the front, we've got a bench seat across. Yeah, and it's really basic vinyl, right? Yeah. So it's like kind of one of the most basic interiors. So 3,500 pounds is a lot. That's a ton. You could put a big camper in the back, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could carry a truck camper, do whatever you want in the back here. This, these beds are the same on both of these trucks. They are six and three quarter feet. Yeah, so same cab configuration on both of them, same bed, and they're both available with a, a longer bed too, if you need some more carrying space. Yeah, but. by the way, sorry I made noise, but this is obviously a very simple tailgate. See, there's no kind of automatic features or damp. No, no damp. bed liner either, but. One thing I'm noticing back here is that sliding glass on the back. So that's a little bit of an upgrade. And also with the privacy glass, this yeah. was parked next to another XL at the dealership that had the completely clear fishbowl glass. And yeah. this definitely makes it look a little more premium. Yeah, totally. That's a nice touch. And it doesn't cost a lot, actually. No. I think that so, was like a $30 upgrade or something. Yeah, it, well, in the window, the sliding window was like a couple, a couple hundred, hundred bucks. bucks. Yeah. yeah, so that's really nice. Um, let's talk about towing really quick before we move on to the other truck. Uh, they redesigned these tow points, which is really great, really accessible. Two and a half inch receiver and wiring, of course. But dude, because of the transmission, the rating on this truck is about, for this configuration, is 14,100 pounds of towing. Yeah. Which is kind of lowish for a heavy duty truck. Yeah, we'll have to see what that, I genuinely don't know what that other one tows, so you'll have okay, to surprise I'll, me I'll, over there. I'll let you know. Cool. All right, so let's keep moving. Let's look at the payload over here, because you would think it'd be a lot lower, right? Yep. Usually when you add, you know, all the leather seats and all the screens and all the tech, things start to jump up. And the diesel engine is heavy too. Yeah, exactly. But if we look at the door sticker here, 2,876 pounds. So definitely a couple hundred pounds less, um, but you know, it's still very capable for for what this truck is and here's one of the secrets because this truck weighs a lot more like 1700 pounds more but if you look down here dude the gross vehicle weight rating here is 11,000, and it's 10,000 in the other truck yep so what they do on these trucks and actually general motors started this several years ago there's different classifications of trucks so they change the springs and then you get more payload, which is really cool. Yeah, that's awesome that, you know, it's not just across the board. Doesn't matter what, you know, it's loaded up with. You get the full capability of the truck. Yeah. So here, obviously, we have several options. We have powered tailgate. Fancy. We have a bed step built into it. We have a camera. In the back of the tailgate. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So when you, when you lower it, you can still see. That's um, really cool. I didn't even know that was a feature they were offering. Yeah, this came out just this year. So that's pretty neat. And of course, everybody has seen this, right? Yep, that's been around a while. This is Ford's version. Everyone's doing one of these now. Makes it nice and easy to get up but here. Dude, but that tunnel cover that's Ford branded is 2200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I Not think cheap. I would, I think I'll definitely skip that. 
I think so too, especially because it takes up all that room in the front of your bed. And me being someone who primarily uses my truck to haul around motorcycles, that uh, pretty much makes the truck bed a little bit useless. Yeah, but check it out. Um, we have power right there, so two, two kilowatt. Nice. That's pretty sweet. The other truck didn't have that. Yeah, we've also got some in-bed lighting on both sides. The button for it is over there on that side. Yep. And, uh, and of course, bed liner. Cleats and a bed liner, yeah. yep. And so, and of course, the fancy rear glass as well. All of that stuff is available. So how about this? Let's jump into this truck and show some of the interior features and then go for a drive. Sounds good. All right, before we drive, let's take a look at some features here in the Platinum. Well, before we do that, you're going to tell me how much this tows? Yeah, 4,000 pounds more. That's so, pretty big. Yeah, so that's a lot of weight. I mean, if you're hauling for work, that could make a lot of money, yep. right? Um, and if you're hauling for fun, that's still a lot, big difference. Yeah. But look at this leather, dude. Yeah, quite the difference here. You know, those seats over in that truck are really basic and these, you've got nice perforated leather, some contrasting color, nice stitching, and a platinum badge in the back. Plus they're heated in the back seat. Yeah, and then you have this. You have a little console with cup holders. Look, we have vents, really nice. USB-C, that's the buttons for heated seats. We have actually 120, 110 volt outlet and the 12 volt. By the way, this is, has something funny. If we open up this, this has vinyl floor too. <laughs> yeah, which you actually pay extra to get. Yeah, so in the Platinum and some other luxury versions of the Ford Super Duty and F-150, you can get vinyl floor, but it's like $115. Yeah. <laughs> I would do the vinyl floor option. I yeah, mean, it's kind of cool. No matter what, these trucks are built to work, even if it's a Platinum model, and this just makes it easier to keep clean. So All right, I'm a let's, fan of that. Let's jump on the front. Yep. Ah, uh, yes, dude, let's fire this diesel up. Power it up. By the way, big screens in front of me and here in the center too. Yeah. I really like this Ford screen. It is pretty massive. It's not like the vertical screen that Ram does, but I like the orientation of this. This is one of the best screens I've used. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like an afterthought, right? Mm, not like at a, all. Like a big tablet inserted up yeah, here. Yeah, you've still got nice physical dials. It's good layout and lots of space here. We have wireless charging. We, of course, have ports. We have these cup holders, you know, that you can turn it into four cup holders or two. And uh, still a good old fashioned column shift. Yeah, and uh, all your four wheel drive controls down there. So we've got uh, two high, four high, four low, and then a our locker. rear locker as well. All and, drive modes. and it's got turn assist here because it's a tremor. Mm -hmm. So it can drag one tire off road. And cameras, dude. I think this is why I, I, you know, <laughs> after driving many new trucks, I'm getting used to cameras. Me too. These trucks are getting bigger and bigger and they're getting harder and harder to park. And the cameras have saved me many times, especially parking at our office. So, by the way, I have to thank our friends at Brighton Ford, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Check them out using the link in the description below. They helped us out because without them, this comparison wouldn't be possible. Really. Yeah. If you want to that, if you want to buy that exact truck right there, it's for sale. So go yep. go over to Brighton Ford. Yep. But take a look, dude. Uh, we have bed cameras. We've got hitch cameras. We've got. I can look at the rear tires. I can look at the front tires. I can look up front in many different configurations. Yeah, I mean, if you want cameras, this thing has it. Yeah, I mean, obviously that truck's gonna have a rear camera, but for me. This is the important one. Being able to see out the front and over the hood is huge, and the 360 uh, helps a really long way too. So yeah. yeah, the cameras are, I gotta say, a really good feature, and once you start using them, like you said, it's, it's kind of hard to live without them. Um, so yeah, so let's go for a quick drive. By the way, this is a diesel, so we have an exhaust brake, and we've done actually several videos with this truck. We took it off-road, uh, we did the night gauntlet, we did the drag race with this truck, so mm -hmm. check out alttfl.com. Yeah, we've done a whole lot with this thing, and uh, yeah, there's a few things that I'm noticing too as I look around in this truck, like ventilated and heated seats up front. Yeah. Um, we've got the sound system that has way more speakers with in speakers here. With speakers in the ceiling. Yeah, and aren't there even some in like the headrest yeah. too? Yeah, the headrest is perforated for a little bit of uh, audio action. Yeah. So a lot of stuff in here that, uh, you know, if you're taking this on a long road trip or cross country, there's definitely some comfort items in here that you would get used to. Can I grab a camera just for a second? This also has a heads up display 
it's right there in front of me it's currently showing my rpm counter and my gear and my speed but that's a cool feature too yeah. i don't have to take my eyes off the road you know what we're missing though a sunroof a sunroof yeah for as much as this truck costs i would expect it to have a big panoramic sunroof up there so let me accelerate down here just really briefly actually we'll accelerate once we get on the, on the main road but let's talk about some um price differential differential right so we see what the base engine is yep. it's in the other one um, if you wanted a 7.3 gas engine, it's not as simple as it seems. No, you have to start tacking on a lot of packages before they let you actually add that 7.3 engine. Yeah, for example, STX appearance package, which has a lot of features and it costs a lot of money, like at least 6,500 bucks to get that more premium gas engine. Yeah, so, you know, on paper, it might look like it's not a huge price increase, but uh, yeah, I mean, by the time you add some of the packages that you need to get to that more premium gas engine, the Godzilla, you're pretty close to, you know, a diesel, a diesel engine. Yeah. Granted, with without some of the cool appearance packages and a lower trim, but you're close to that diesel price. Let me accelerate really quick. Go for so it. So this is just impromptu. When the turbo lights up, it lights it up. It goes. This yeah. truck definitely moves. For something that weighs 8,200 pounds at the curb, this thing moves. Yeah, it's it's definitely quick and it's fun to drive. I mean, like I mentioned before, towing is big. If you have big trailers and you're moving equipment around all the time, you really are going to want the diesel engine. You might need the diesel engine, but even if you're not towing all the time, I mean, I drive a diesel, a heavy duty diesel, and I'm like the last person on the face of the planet that <laughs> needs one. But I start my truck up every day and it puts a smile on my face and it's fun to drive. And there's something to that. Yeah, and the base the, uh, standard diesel uh, power stroke is about $10,000 upcharge on this truck. And the high output, this one, is $12,500 mm -hmm. upcharge. And then of course, platinum is a whole different story, right? I mean, that adds a lot of money uh, to the truck you're buying. Yeah, I mean, as far as a, a fancy diesel truck goes, this is not quite the top. There's a few check boxes we could add onto this, but this is pretty much as close as it gets. But I think because it has some of the accessories like the tonneau cover, the winch, of course, uh, this is really, really up there in terms of options and price as well. Yeah, definitely. But a very comfortable place to be and... Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Sorry, it, it, it squirts the tires I know. almost everywhere. It makes both of us laugh. And <laughs> even like pulling around the office the other day to put this in our garage, I lift the tires up. And yeah, that doesn't get old. All right, dude. So that's pretty cool. Now, how about we take a look at the uh, work truck? Let's do it. All right, dude, let's take a look at this XL. Yeah, a little more basic back here, but there are some, you know, similarities. Yeah. So looking at, you know, the floor, we've got the vinyl floor, but... Um, but then the seats are kind of vinyl. Runs out there, actually. Vinyl, yeah. vinyl. Vinyl seats, no storage, um, plastic door cards. Everywhere. Plastic everywhere. Yes. Careful, Andre, you might break it. Sorry, I used to own an XL <laughs> F-150. Um, we have some more cup holders down there and then USB-C and a 12 volt, but no like AC outlets. So you can't charge a laptop or, you know, power some heavy duty stuff. This is weird. I know it saves money, but there are no seat back pockets. Yeah. Um, in these seats, neither on that side or this side. But let me just flip open the uh, six person seat. Go for it. So bam, so you can, in the pinch, right? Or if you have maybe like a kid that's rolling with you, probably like a 10 year old or a 12 year old, they can probably uh, be in the middle here. Yeah, it's not super comfortable, but I've got a bench seat in my truck and it's my dog's favorite seat. So that's what I use it for. Sweet, let's put it back. And there's still storage up here, so. Yeah, a little bit of storage, not lockable like the other truck, Yeah. Um, but yeah. But this is the option we were talking about. Uh, we have additional aux switches. Yeah, so you can wire in, uh, you know, I guess different lighting kits or plows or... Or even winch. I mean, winch, you could install yeah, a winch on this Whatever you too. want. Uh, by the way, uh, this seat is basic. 
let me try to uh, put put it down. But the other seats are all flat and massaging too. Yeah, it's it's funny looking at one of these trucks. Like you you notice all the the obvious things <laughs> that you don't get, like the big screens and the heads up display. But there's a lot of things that you know you kind of have to take a few more minutes to look at, like the plastic steering wheel and the fact that the seats are not only a different material and don't massage you, but they move manually. And yeah. That you're missing a little cover here on your door, and there's a lot more plastic. And there's some sort of space underneath my screen. <laughs> yeah, and you know like buttons that don't actually depress so yeah a lot of obvious things but um there's also a lot of really subtle minor details like you know the mirror that doesn't auto dim just things you wouldn't notice in a quick glance all right well let's fire this up let's take it for a ride cool so i wanted to point out some key differences yeah i mean key <laughs> literal key differences so here's the basic uh, work truck key and it doesn't have remote start. By the way, we don't have remote uh, keyless entry. No, or push button start. This is actually a blade key. This is actually use. a key versus this key. Um, but this would be a problem for me like three years ago, but now there's also the app. Okay. So you can control this truck. Um, like you can lock and unlock doors remotely via your app. You could start your engine via app sometimes. Um, so, the app solves some of those problems. Yeah, definitely. Remote start is definitely nice to Especially have. Especially in the winter like yeah. this. So. Much smaller screen in here. <laughs> but look at my central screen. Yeah, we it's, still got one though. It's like a postage stamp. It's right there, but it still has a lot of information. So when I was scrolling through it before, this truck is, of course, brand new. Look, I still have my coolant temps, my transmission temps, and a lot of information, actually. Yeah, the Ford does a really good job showing you all the gauges. I was really impressed in some of your recent Ike gauntlets with uh, how much information they show on the bigger screens, but good to know that even if you go for one of the less fancier options, that you still get pretty much everything you need. But look, still four low, four high. My rear locker, this is a 373 mm -hmm. rear axle. No, um, uh, you had, what was it, backup assist? Oh, a turn one? assist. Turn assist. Yeah, n n uh, but there's still several modes are available. So normal, slippery, and tow hole mode, and eco are all here. So I'm actually curious. I haven't driven a 6.8 very much. So let's go for a drive. Mm -hmm. um, of course, manual climate control system too. Yeah, so not quite as nice there. And uh, I'm guessing your steering wheel controls are a little more basic in this as well. I do have uh, cruise control and I do have some menus. By the way, this is my only camera. Yeah, the quality <laughs> on that is not amazing. Yeah, the resolution is bad and I don't have a lot of options like looking forward. Or if you have your tailgate open, you can't see out the back of it. So I think, so I'm not missing keyless entry. I think I can use my phone. That's okay. This is okay with me actually. I'm, I'm used to you know, starting my truck with a key. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am bothered by lack of cameras. Yep. I'm also uh, a little bit, but you know, the seat, what do you think about the comfort of the seat? I think these seats are plenty fine. I think they look kind of not great, uh, is a nice way of putting it. The yeah. other seats look awesome, but as far as comfort goes, I'd be totally fine in these and probably less stressed about my pets ripping these up. Scratching, or if you spilled something, this is no big deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so overall, I mean, I'm not missing a lot of things. So camera is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, we have these aux switches, which is really awesome. The visors are still fully functional, right? Yep. So that's pretty sweet. So we're not missing much there. Yeah, I gotta say for me, I think I'm with you. I think the cameras are the big one. I also appreciate a nice sound system. So the sound system and the other platinum yeah, truck. Yeah, this is Sounds basic. really good and this is really, really basic. Um, probably, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would guess this is like a six speaker system in a basic truck like yeah. this. You probably have double the speakers, if not more, in that other truck. Well, let me accelerate kind of like the same way I did in the other one. Yeah, so kind of rolling start. Oh wow, it kind of, there's no lag. No, but you don't feel that like ramp up of power no. that, where it kind of kicks you in the butt and sends you down the road. Uh, sounds good though. Yeah, so it's got that V8 growl and you could put an exhaust system on this probably mm -hmm. and get that kind of traditional V8 noise, uh, which is wonderful. But like you said, uh, so in the diesel, what happened was there's a small delay, right? And then you can really feel the turbo, uh, you know, kick on, kick on and this was, it downshifted quickly though. Yeah. 
bam. Immediately. Um, and yeah, you, we were off and moving, but um, if these were side by side and, you know, taken off from a stoplight, this would be way back in the mirror. And also, I mean, the, uh, the diesel also has a nice sound. Yeah, too. definitely. Yeah. yeah, there's, I mean, there's like a whole experience you get out of driving the power stroke that you don't quite get in this truck. Um, you know, it's, I'd say that other, the power stroke, it's more capable, but it's also a little more fun. The other thing I would change on this truck almost instantly is probably the tires. Yeah. Right? You've seen the tires, what they look like on this one, and they're small, they're basic. The Steelys, I don't mind. Yeah, no, the Steelys, I mean, you had your power boost Ford for yeah. a while on Steelys, and once you put a, a, a Meteor tire on that truck, it completely changed how the, the truck was stanced, so. Yeah, so I would change that because ground clearance is awful important, right? Yeah. You need, you know, if you're going off the beaten path, you want that ground clearance and also additional bite from the tires. So I do miss that from the Tremor. Yeah. And uh, the other thing, we were playing around with the configurator with this truck. And uh, sometimes, you know, you expect work trucks to only come in work truck white. This one, you've got some cool color options available, like that flame red color really pops. Yeah, so red, there's um, antimatter blue. Mm -hmm. There's also something new called like dark bronze. Yeah. I forget the exact name of it. Yeah, it's kind of a cool look though. And yeah. that goes a long way in making a truck like this feel a little more premium. This one's white, but you know, if you went for the one of those cooler colors, this wouldn't look so much like a work truck. Well, this is also not an, uh, like a night driving test, but I'm a little bit worried about these headlamps. You mentioned a great point that they warm up and melt snow, but I, I kind of uh, am a sucker for LED lights. You yeah, know? I, uh, I am too. I mean, we talk about safety all the time and lighting up the road is super important. Yeah. And uh, But you could add extras. You could add extras, <laughs> yeah. which I mean, you know, I'm talking about my truck a few times, but I have halogens and I did need to add LED fog lights to be able to see comfortably at night. So, um, you know, it'd be nice if this had maybe a mixture, maybe some LED fog lights from the factory or something just to throw a little more light down the road. Yeah. All right. Well, now let's go back to uh, talking about both trucks because we need to come up with the ultimate decision. Yeah, we need to disclose the, uh, the final prices and see which one we would go home with. All right, so this Platinum Tremor Power Stroke high output has a list price of 103,500 approximately. That is crazy. Yes. Crazy, crazy. And this gasser, this work truck, 4x4, like we showed you, 53,800. Which is a lot easier to swallow. <laughs> a lot easier. Which one are you going to take home? I think you all could probably <laughs> guess this. I'm going home with the XL, or at least that's the one I would take home. And it's a pretty easy choice for me because there are a lot of really nice things in this truck, like the diesel and, you know, the, the leather seats, the nice sound system, keyless entry. But for the price difference, I could get this truck, save myself 50 grand, go buy something like a Bronco Sport that has all the features of this truck, and then I wouldn't need to drive this massive truck around every day. I'd have a little commuter. So that's my solution. Okay, okay, whoa, whoa. So uh, I wanna bring a couple more points. Dude, this is far more efficient, even though it's heavier and bigger because diesel is more efficient. So I would say it depends on your use case too, right? If you're towing trailers, look into a diesel, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe 10K more or 12.5 more. I think a diesel will, if you're towing trailers cross country, let's say, it will save you on fuel. Of course, there's some other downsides like maintenance, right? DEF, you have to buy. Yep. Um, so you have to weigh all those items. I think for 103,000, it's also not my truck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like I said, I would make a few changes to this if I was to buy it. Tires, maybe running boards, right? Um, you know, and some of the other things I mentioned, you have to bedline it. Yeah, and so, it's got the locker too. I mean, you can make this a really cool heavy duty off-road truck with a winch, some tires and some skid plates and a little bit of a lift. It would be super sweet, so. Yeah, so that's probably another 10K-ish, right, of price. So let us know what you think in the comments below, right? Mm -hmm. And check out oldtfl.com for everything automotive because we've done a lot with these super duties. Yeah, there's a ton out there. We have them off-road, we have them towing, we have them drag racing. So go check all that out. See you in the next one.